Hello. In the previous lecture, we have introduced the concept of autonomous agents, and we have closely looked at the line of sight test, which is a key technique for autonomously moving agents. But this technique does not create any movement by itself. It is applicable to agents uh, which are already in motion in some way. For example, uh, following a fixed path like in this sample project called Go. Or even uh, being directly controlled by the player. This time we will be talking about another technique called behavior patterns, which can create the actual movement. Moreover, uh, they are one of the most fundamental techniques used in AI to control the NPCs or non-player characters in many different games. For example, they allow for modeling the effective enemy pursued behavior, but also free or evade. But uh, before we go on, we have to learn something about rabbits and their natural arch enemy the fox. We will consider both the rabbit and the fox to be autonomous agents. And here is a quick reminder about uh, autonomous agents. They can sense the environment and act upon this environment and uh, doing this, they do it in pursuit of their own goals. So to affect what they can possibly sense in the future. So, what is the meaning of being a rabbit? Rabbits uh, as autonomous agents are normally nibbling some grass. Uh, sometimes they notice that the world state has changed and this happens when they sense a fox. They act by fleeing, fleeing in the opposite direction to the fox, and this is done to minimize the chance of further sensing the fox. And now the meaning of being a fox. They are just wand wandering around, but sometimes they can notice that the world state has changed, the rabbit has been sensed. So they act by pursuing the rabbit to maximize the chance of still sensing the rabbit and consequently to change their own state from uh, hungry to full up. In this context, I can now discuss our behavior patterns such as seek, flee, arrive, pursuit, evade, wonder, and obstacle avoidance. Swarm intelligence is a little bit broader topic and it will be left for a separate presentation. But first things first. This diagram shows a moving autonomous agent. Uh, the direction and speed or velocity of this movement is shown as a velocity vector. The agent acts upon its environment using a steering force. And this steering force is, uh, uh, is introduced in order to change its current velocity to the new desired velocity. This desired velocity can be read from this diagram as a simple vector addition. So velocity plus steering equals desired velocity. Our controlling task in every frame of uh, uh, simulation of a aut moving autonomous agent is to find the value of steering. And this value of steering can be found from this formula, desired velocity minus velocity or current velocity. If uh, the value of steering is large, uh, the change in velocity will be aggressive. So to keep it uh, reasonably low and to achieve soft fluid motion, you should apply uh, reasonably low values of steering as well. With this basis, we are at last ready to discuss the first 
of the behavioral patterns, the seek behavioral pattern. It is exactly what a fox demonstrates on spotting a rabbit. It tries to change its current velocity so that to get closer. So here we have our autonomous agent. Uh, you can think about it as a fox uh, with its uh, current velocity. And now it spots something that it wants to seek. Uh, yeah, for example, rabbit. Therefore, its uh, desired velocity will be pointing towards the desired goal. And having this, we can follow on with the calculation of the steering force, which will be exactly as shown in the previous slide. Let's have a look at some uh, pseudocode, which is nearly C++. Uh, but um, in order to make it a working code in GFC, you may need some slight modifications. So first of all, we will define two vectors, desired velocity and steering. The assumption here is that the velocity is the input for this algorithm, so I don't uh, declare this as a separate uh, variable. Now, desired velocity, can be calculated at the relocation vector or the relative position of the target target in relation to our current position. So it's target position minus position, where the position is the position of the agent. Then the desired velocity has to be normalized because we don't want a very high desired velocity just because uh, the connection of the relative uh, position of the goal is far away. Okay, so uh, by normalizing the desired velocity and multiplying it by speed, the desired velocity will keep the constant speed of of the movement. And now we can calculate steering using the formula shown in the previous slide as desired velocity minus velocity. And these uh, three lines of code is uh, actually everything you need in order to get the seek behavior pattern, which is uh, very useful, for example, to model uh, enemies in a, in a game. The next behavior pattern is called flee. And uh, this time is what a rabbit does on spotting a fox. So, again, we have a uh, agent. This time it will be a rabbit. And we have some kind of a goal, but the difference now is that the agent wants to move away from this uh, object here. Therefore, the desired velocity will be pointing this way. Okay, but apart from this detail, Everything else is exactly the same as previously. So the steering force will look quite strange. It's going backwards. But the maths behind the scenes is exactly the same. Steering is still desired velocity minus velocity. And here you have a, a pseudocode, which is very similar to the pseudocode of the seek behavior pattern, the only a change is that desired velocity is now calculated as position, my current position minus target position. So it's negated value of previous desired velocity, which was target pos minus pos. So uh, seek and flee are really similar in terms of coding and in terms of uh, maths, but so different in terms of behavior in a game. The arrive behavior is uh, very similar to the seek behavior. The difference is that uh, uh, the seek pattern always applies the same constant speed. And sometimes it happens that it overruns the desired destination, particularly if the latter is stationary. Arrive is an enhanced version. Uh, in which uh, the speed is fine-tuned to allow a smooth arrival to the destination point. 
as you can see from this uh, pseudocode, the speed is made proportional to the distance between the agent position and the target position. Therefore, when the agent gets closer to uh, its target, its speed will get lower. Pursuit is another enhanced version of the SIG behavior. This time, the target point of an agent called here pursuer is located in front of the, the other agent called evader and exactly in its anticipated future position. So that the per pursuer, instead of heading towards the evader, it tries to forestall or anticipate its future position and go directly to this expected position. This creates much more lifelike behavior than in case of the seek pattern. And um, the evade behavior pattern is to pursue what is free to seek. So this time we are steering the evader, but instead of uh, avoiding the pursuer, the evader tries to avoid the anticipated future position of the pursuer. The next behavior pattern is called wonder. Wonder is a very useful, even though not particularly exciting pattern. It is designed to produce um, an impression of um, random walk uh, through the agent's environment. A naive approach would be to calculate a random steering force each frame of the animation, uh, but uh, the movement produced by this would be very jittery. So to have a little bit more persistent turns, there is another solution, and it is to project a circle in front of the agent and steer towards a special target that is moving along the perimeter of this uh, circle. So here is our agent, and this is the circle projected in front of this uh, agent. We will call this circle simply a wonder circle. The algorithm is uh, well parameterized by the radius of the circle, and uh, the distance between uh, the circle, the center of the circle, and the agent. Now, the first step of the algorithm is to initialize the target position. Uh, this target will always be somewhere on the perimeter of the circle, and it's quite logical that the first initial position for the target will be in front of the agent at the opposite uh, end of a circle if circles have any ends, but uh, I hope you know what I mean. Now, the second step and the first actual step after the initialization is to apply a random distortion. We will apply it by creating a vector of a constant magnitude or length, but at a random direction. So the target simply moves to a direct, uh, sorry, random direction like this. And now we are ready to the third step of the algorithm, put it back to the perimeter of the wonder circle. As you remember, our agreement was the target will always be at the somewhere on the perimeter of the wonder circle. So here it is. And it's a nearly complete first uh, cycle of the algorithm. The step number four now is to apply the seek behavior pattern for the agent to direct to the target. So as you can see, uh, the, our, our agent has just performed a random turn right. Now, the steps uh, two, three, and four will be iterated, will be repeated many times. So now we go back to application of a random distortion somewhere. Please note that it can be in any direction. It can be also to the uh, inside of the circle. Now 
the target is pulled out to the perimeter, but the main assumption that the target ends up at the perimeter is kept. Okay, and uh, of course seek the target, and uh, the third cycle will render the target move to the left or counterclockwise. Of course, it will be also pulled back to the perimeter. What is important in this uh, algorithm is that uh, left or right turn will be persistent. Uh, once you start the turn right, it will take several cycles before uh, changing this turn into a turn left. And this will create uh, more fluid, more realistic and more natural movement. OK, so all this looks uh, pretty much logical, but the big question is what kind of programming approach uh, we should apply to get uh, all this uh, working and working in C++. So the programming approach is based on two considerations. First of all, the wonder circle will be centered at the position 0, 0 of the coordinate system and its radius will be equal to 1. This uh, simplifies a lot. First of all, uh, the initialization of the target position, which was here, becomes very simple because, as you can read from this diagram, the initial coordinates of the target are 0, 1. Now, application of a random distortion is just adding to the target a vector with uh, two random coordinates. You can scale this uh, vector differently if you wish, uh, but this one should work. Please note that uh, random here uh, is a function returning a random number in range between 0 and 1. OK, the next step, pulling it back to the perimeter of the wonder circle, is surprisingly simple because uh, whatever are the coordinates of the target after the apl application of the random distortion, if we normalize the coordinates of the target by the definition of normalization, normalized vector is a vector at the uh, magnitude of one. So if we are talking about coordinates, a vector with uh, magnitude one will be somewhere on the perimeter of this circle. So a very elegant implementation. But of course, the main question is, all right, this uh, wonder circle, it's very nice, but it should be at the wonder distance in front of a moving uh, agent. It should have a wonder radius, all right? So what we need is to introduce additional step here. Reposition the wonder circle. And uh, the code for this is here. So we will now, when we have this uh, target uh, position calculated in the small circle in the center of the coordinate system, uh, now we can do the following thing. We can find the real target in front of the guy, in front of the agent, by adding together the position of the agent uh, the wonder distance multiplied by normalized uh, velocity vector and uh, okay don't worry i will show this on the graphical diagram so first of all we have our agent somewhere here now we know its position we know also the direction in which it is heading and this direction is the velocity vector normalized okay normalized with velocity vector will show the direction uh, in which uh, the vector uh, the agent is moving uh, but it will not provide uh, additional value for the speed so the normalized velocity vector can be multiplied by what we call the wonder distance and uh, in this way we can get the first vector the wonder distance position of the agent plus normalized velocity, so direction of the movement, multiplied by the value of wonder distance, gives us the position of the center of the circle. 
Now, to get the right circle radius, we just need to scale or multiply the current coordinates of the target by our desired wonder circle radius. Here it is, and we will also move this circle here. Done. This is the real position of the target. And here is the corresponding C++ code, maybe pseudocode, as I mentioned before. Uh, this code will not be one-to-one -one applicable for your GFC uh, projects, but it will be very, very, very close to it. Okay, so position plus normalized velocity multiplied by uh, one distance plus target. Please note that the target is the coordinates pair of coordinates of the target point multiplied by wonder radius to scale to to make to to grow this um, uh, wonder circle to its uh, desired size and now we are just one step uh, from the end of this algorithm we need to call one of the previously described uh, behaviors seek providing the real target as the uh, target for the uh, for the agent to seek and perhaps providing a special speed. In uh, most cases, uh, wonder speed should be a little bit lower than uh, regular seek or flee uh, speed. As you think about it, if I am a rabbit and just nibbling a, a grass, some grass, and wandering around, I won't be particularly speedy, but when I spot the fox, I will run really, really quick. So the speed should be different from uh, seek slash free speed, different and lower. Please note uh, uh, it's quite important that steps from two to five should be uh, executed each frame on a frame by frame basis. And uh, step number one is just the initialization. It's a uh, one of initialization. The last of the behavior patterns presented today is called obstacle avoidance. It's about an um, autonomous agent negotiating its way across a complicated environment in which uh, we have various uh, obstacles. And as the name suggests, the goal is to avoid these obstacles. So the first step is to create a rectangular stripe in front of the agent along its motion axis and at the width or identical to the width of the agent. Now for each obstacle we will find its distance from the motion axis shown red and the position along the motion axis shown blue. Now we will discard every obstacle which, first of all, is behind the agent. So, for example, this one. Uh, it will have a negative position along the motion axis. We will also discard every obstacle that is beyond agent's field of sight, so too high on the positive side of the motion axis, so this one. Then we will discard every obstacle that is further from the motion axis than half of the width of the agent plus the radius, so it's uh, outside or sideways from the strip, so it's uh, this one. From the remaining obstacles, if there are any, only the closest to the agent is taken. So this one. And now when we are guaranteed to be left with at most one obstacle, a small sideways steering force is generated. Thank you for watching and don't forget to watch the final installment of our Autonomous Agent series, which will be about Swarm Intelligence. Thank you.